Hi, and welcome to another Clever Touch video with me, Gareth, primary school teacher, and my daughter, Tallulah. And here she is, as if by magic. Ready? One, two, three. There she is. Fantastic. I can see that you're ready to star in the new uh, Die Hard movie, uh, John McLean, with that dirty vest on. Lovely. You're enjoying your day in the sunshine in the garden, haven't you, Tallulah? Well, You've been out there enjoying nature, enjoying the earth, and I'm going to bring you literally back down to earth with this key stage two video all about the solar system. So we're going to set you some challenges. There's a quiz at the end of this um, that hopefully this presentation will go through a lot of these answers. So if you're interested in learning about the solar system, this video will take you through lots and lots of facts. So Tallulah, let's start off with what is at the centre of our solar system. And it is the, can you read that word there? Well, no, read the word. The sun, isn't it? The sun. The sun is at the centre of our solar system. Spinning outwards along with the rest of the Milky Way from the big bang that created the universe uh, billions of years ago. Um, the sun is at the centre of our uh, solar system and all of our planets spin around it. Let's read about the sun. Can we tap on that to do that? Okay. So, at the heart of our solar system is the sun, the star each of the planets revolve around. Spinning through space is part of the Milky Way galaxy. It's the source of all life on our planet. So if you think about it, we wouldn't have life on our planet without the sun. So the sun gives us light, and that light is turned by plants into food, and those plants give us oxygen, and also, of course, they give us food. So the animals eat the plants, or there are animals that eat animals that eat the plants, but all of that Food can be sourced back to uh, the sun. Here it is there, an image of the sun, a scene from our planet. Okay, now we're going to have a look at all of the planets. And it says, can we put the planets in the correct order that they um, orbit the uh, sun? It has this diagram here. It just helps you move it around to that. Now, if I put the sun here and we stretch out all of the other nodes here, we can move those over there. And then we'll start to explore all of these other planets. So there they go. Now the first planet closest to the sun is called Mercury. So here is the node all about Mercury. So we'll move the others out of the way. So if we tap on Mercury, I'm going to enlarge it so we can read about it. Would you like to see a picture of Mercury? Okay, so there it is. It looks very damaged and battered by lots of meteors that, that have hit it over the millions of years. Um, so, Mercury. It's the closest planet to the Sun. Mercury is named after the messenger of the Roman gods. Um, most of our planets are named after the uh, Roman gods. Mercury is only a bit larger than our Moon. Its day side is scorched by the Sun and can reach 840 degrees Fahrenheit or 450 degrees Celsius. No, it's not. It's the one that's hiding here to do this. Looks fairly tiny compared to some of the others, isn't it? That looks like that. Yeah. Now, um, 450 degrees Celsius on the day side, so it doesn't rotate as it goes um, around the, the sun. Only one side is facing the sun all the time, and that side is permanently hot. Okay, it was known to the ancients, a lot of the, the planets were known to the ancients, and that means that people as far back as the ancient Greek times. 4,000 years ago, we were able to spot these planets in the night sky. Maybe at first they thought they were a star. What is it to do? Yeah. A little moth. Oh, never mind. That little moth isn't going to damage us. We're thinking of things that are planet size it in this session. Me, Did it? Okay, so um, let's have a look at um, the moons of Mercury. Now, Mercury doesn't have any moons. There are two planets that don't have any moons, and Mercury is one of those. Okay, so I'll just shrink Mercury down and put Mercury closest to the Sun. Now the next, the next planet out from the Sun after, after Mercury is Venus. Here's Venus. So let's we'll enlarge our node of Venus. And we've got a picture of Venus here. So Venus looks a very scorched, hot planet, doesn't it, to do that? It looks like fire. It does. Now, if we read about Venus, it says that Venus although it looks a very angry red planet, it was named uh, after the Roman goddess of love. And now its size and structure are similar to Earth, but Venus's thick, toxic atmosphere traps heat in, a runaway kind of greenhouse effect. 
Oddly, Venus spins slowly in the opposite direction of most planets. This was another one that was known to the ancients, being one of our closest planets, and you can see it with the naked eye, if you know where to look in the night sky. Um, and the day, um, let's have a look, the orbit is 225 Earth days, um, and a day is 241 Earth days, it spins very slowly. Okay, and it's 108 billion kilometers from the um, sun. Now, let's have a look at the, the moons of Venus. Like this. Yeah. Now, Venus does not have any moons. So Mercury and Venus, the two closest planets, don't have any moons. I don't know if that's something to do with the fact that they're being that close to the sun. Maybe any kind of um, planetary bodies or, uh, that, that might have got close <laughs> to um, those two planets to become moons got dragged into the sun themselves. Okay. What's that one with the sun? Or Rings. Oh, we'll find out in a minute. Okay, so there's Venus next to uh, Mercury now. Uh, now the next one to look at is our planet Earth. We're the next one out. Now, we are in what's called the Goldilocks zone. We've done a video about Goldilocks, haven't we, Tallulah? Now, the Goldilocks zone uh, is linked to that part of the story where um, Goldilocks eats baby bear's porridge and it was just right. Now, that's because for Earth, for our life to be on our planet, if I just expand the information there, things have to be just right. We have to be in this kind of area away from the sun, so we're not too close to get all scorched and burnt looking like uh, Mercury and Venus, and not too far away that we're out into the deep, cold of space. So we're in just the right zone. So we're very lucky. Our planet has... I've got some to Now our, um, our planet has got an atmosphere with oxygen to help life and of course water as well that life needs and we've got that warmth from the sun at just the right amount of time and light from the sun as well so we're very very lucky okay let's have a look now we have to astronomers have begun to spot stars that also have planets that could be in the goldilocks zone that we could maybe one day move to and that's very important because, of course, one day our star will die and we will need to get off our planet if the human race is to survive. Um, but don't worry, that's not for millions of years yet. Okay. We are 150 million kilometres from the sun. Now, do we have a moon, Tallulah, on our planet? How many moons do we have? What? How many moons do you see in the sky? One. one. We only have one moon, don't we? And there's a picture of it. Okay. So yeah. I'm a little bit worried that where you're sitting, all the boys and girls at home won't be able to see the pictures. So remember, you have to see, I have to stand this side, and you're better off on that side. Thank you. Okay. Now, if we have a look at the next planet out from the Earth, we've got Mars. So Mars is another red-looking planet. Okay, and it's the last of the rocky planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, the first closest planets to the Sun, are all rocky planets. Okay, so um, if we read the text on Mars, just enlarge that. So it says, the fourth planet from the Sun and the last of the rocky planets. Mm -hmm. Mars is named after the Roman god of war. Uh, Mars is a cold, dusty place. The dust and iron oxide gives the planet its reddish colour. Okay, Mars shares similarities with Earth. It has mountains and valleys and storm systems ranging from small dust devils to planet engulfing dust storms. Okay, and they believe it's got water ice on Mars. So another planet that, yeah, it's also known to the ancients. Now, interestingly, a day on Mars is almost the same length as a day on Earth. It's 24 hours and 37 minutes. They get 37 minutes of extra uh, daytime uh, on average, and it's 228 million kilometers away from the sun. Now, if we have a little look at the moons of Mars, Mars has two moons to do that, and they're called right right well for Mars, yeah, but we don't live on Mars, and they're called Phobos and Deimos. Okay, and they both look they both look a bit like. Um, Big cheese. asteroids or boulders floating in space. Cheese! Cheese looks like cheese. It looks like cheese as well. Okay. That one looks like cheese. Okay, so the next, <laughs> the next planet out from Mars is the first of the gas giants, and it's the biggest of all. 
Um, and it's called Jupiter. It's gone one week off up there. Come back, Jupiter. Okay. So here's Jupiter. What, what's the size of this to do this? So this is the, the biggest planet in the solar system. That's right. So it's huge. Uh, I believe all the other planets could fit inside uh, Jupiter. Now it's a gas giant. Now that doesn't mean that it's a big ball of gas that you could fly a rocket through because the gravity of all those gases, all that amount of material, still will crush you at, it, uh, at its core. Uh, so we call it a gas giant. Now, um, if we enlarge the text there, you'll see, whoops, that Jupiter is named after the ruler of the gods, okay? Uh, and it has gigantic storms that rage within its atmosphere. It was also known to the ancients, being so big, um, and it is 86,881 miles in diameter across. And it takes 11.9 Earth years to go around the sun, and a day lasts 9.8 hours, so it spins quite quickly. Hmm. And it's 780 million kilometres, roughly, from the uh, sun. So we're getting into very big numbers now. The further out it is, the longer it takes to, to go around the, the sun. Now, let's have a look how many moons Jupiter's got to do that. It's got 79 moons that scientists know of at the moment. 79. And here are some examples. Europa. Callisto, Ganymede, and Io. So you can remember some of those names. Um, okay, so shrink those down. Now the next planet out is Saturn. Now, Saturn is the one with the rings to do that you're interested in. There they are. What do you think those rings are made of? Snow. Snow? I said stone. Stones. Well, let's see. Let's see what they're made of. Interesting. All right, so let's enlarge that. The sixth planet from the sun and the second largest of the gas giants. It's known for its rings, which are made of ice and rock. So you were kind of right with um, when you said stone, weren't you? And when yeah. I thought you said snow, you would have been kind of right. So. I think mean, you actually did say snow. Oh, you thought you said snow, right, okay. Now, um, its discovery, it was known to the ancients, so it's been known for thousands of years. Named after the Roman god of agriculture, that means farming to do that. Um, now I know what it's made of. Yeah. Snow and, and it's snow. nearly one and a half billion kilometres from the sun. So we're getting really into deep space now, away from the sun. Um, okay, now it does have moons as well. So just to show you how many moons. It doesn't have as many as Jupiter. Jupiter has the most moons. And Saturn has 62 moons. Including Titan and Hyperion. You already knew that, did you? Yes. Oh, wow, that's very lucky. Okay, now the next planet out is Uranus or Uranus. So if we bring. This is the last one. Uh, this is the nearly, nearly the last planet, the penultimate planet. Now look at this picture here to do it. It does look beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's a real pale blue, scientists believe. Of course, all the images of planets. Um, are taken with telescopes and, and computer imagery is in, and try to enhance them. So we don't really know that any of the planets, other than ours, really look like the way they do. But this is what we think is the best guess of what they look like. So you, Uranus really is beautiful, like a big pale blue whitish marble in space. Um, now, Uranus is the seventh planet. It's the only giant planet whose equator is nearly at right angles to its orbit. So it orbits on its side, so instead of spinning like that, that's how we get our day and, and night as we spin and turn and face the sun. But this one spins on its side like that. So that's a bit weird, isn't it, to do that? And astronomers think the reason for that is that another planet-sized object collided with Uranus and knocked it uh, into a tilt. Now, it was discovered in 1781 by William Herschel. It is not a planet that uh, we knew about until a few hundred years ago. Uh, no, we're doing this one here. Oh. Okay, and this one to do it is 2.9 nearly billion kilometres away from the, from the sun. Now, if we have a look at the moons of Uranus, there are 27 moons. And most of those moons, if you recognise this gentleman here, um, are named for, after characters from Shakespeare's plays, like Titania and Oberon. Okay. So, let's shrink that down. Now, the last true planet is Neptune. So, 
Neptune here is another blue planet. Yes. Right? It's a darker blue. Scientists believe. So there's a nice picture of it. It's quite nice, isn't it, to do that? Yes. Now let's read let's read about Neptune. Neptune is named after the Roman god of the sea, which seems appropriate for this bright blue gas like and ice sea. giant. It does look like sea, doesn't it? So it's the last true planet. Neptune is known for strong winds, sometimes faster than the speed of sound. That's over 1,500 miles per hour. Um, now, it's so far out it, that makes it very, very cold. Um, and the planet is more than 30 times as far from the sun as we are. And it has a rocky core. Now, it was discovered in 1846, right? And it is four and a half billion kilometers from the sun. And uh, it does have moons, so I can show you the moons of Neptune. Maybe so, it has 14 moons, as oh, scientists I believe. Did that too. Oh, did you? Including <laughs> Triton and Proteus. Okay, and finally, I've included Pluto. Now, when I was a boy at school, to Lula, Pluto was counted as a planet, but scientists have decided that Pluto is too small to, to be considered a true uh, planet, so it's now being called a dwarf planet. And it isn't, is it? it isn't the I only one. See it. Yeah. Well, it's not on, a, on this picture, in fact. No, they've taken it away. And that's the sad thing. People now think, oh, it's not there anymore. But it is there. It's just not classed as a planet anymore. So if we look at it, there it is. It's a beautiful, uh, strange that? looking planet, isn't is it? Good? Well, we don't know. Just different colours that satellite pictures have picked up. I think it's blue. Do you? Now, if we look. Closer at the text on Pluto, a lot. It says it used to be a planet, but it's now a dwarf planet. Other dwarf planets in the solar system include Make Make and Ceres. So there are more dwarf planets that we've discovered. And it was discovered in 1930. Okay. Um, now it's named after uh, a Roman god of the underworld, Pluto, or, or Hades, as the Greeks uh, called, called him. And um, its distance from the sun, being the furthest one out, is nearly six billion kilometers away. So very distant, very cold. Probably you can just see the, the sun as, a, as like any other star in the sky, really. Okay, so those are all the facts um, about the solar system. Okay, so I'm just going to leave full screen. My fingers work correctly. So we've got we've got we've got this activity here to do to show people very quickly. See if you can remember any of this. Look. No, not too much longer. So, look, to do that. we've got uh, this kind of number line that we can use for this activity to do, to do with the planets. So, can you remember to do? We started off with the sun. It's over here. there. There, that's right. What about that? Now, the next one. I think I can get right or yeah. not. Oh, yes, we can turn it to. Now, the next one was Mercury. Mercury goes there. Oh, we missed what? it. No, no. Oh, yes, that one. So, Mercury was the next one out. Now, all these activities I'm showing you, you, you can sign up to our Close Up Classroom and we'll send you these activities that you can play for yourself. The next one was Venus. Okay. And then we were third from the sun, so it's us next. Earth with an E. Oh, yes, sorry, just pick it up and move it. I still got it right because I know. You know where to put it, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, if you put it right on top of there, then it will work. Let me do that one. Okay, now the next one is Mars. Oh, that's right. And then the next one out was Jupiter. So that's the last of the rocky planets. And now we're going into the gas giants, Jupiter. Yes, you know, you're right. Next one is Saturn. Now, Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. Saturn, you were right the first time. There it is. Saturn and Uranus and Neptune. If you remember that, that order, no, nope. if you remember that order, they spell out the word sun. So S for Saturn, U for Uranus, and N for Neptune, Sun at the end, if you want to help uh, to remember that order. Thank now, very quickly, there's another activity that you can download which gets you to match the names to an image of the planet, so you can learn about those two. But very quickly, we'll just finish off to do the this quiz here, and we'll see if you can remember any of the correct answers. Which planet had the most moons, Tallulah? Do you know at home? Jupiter, uh -huh. wait a minute, let me tell you the answers. Jupiter, Saturn, or Uranus? Yeah. Yes, Jupiter, well done. Now, wait for the question. 
What are Saturn's rings made of? Is it quartz crystals, ice and rock, or ice silver? Ice and rock. Right, well done. Next. So the next question is, how long does it take for Uranus to orbit the Sun? Now, being so far out in space, is it to do that? 84 Earth years, 84 Earth months, or 84 Earth days? So it's so far out in space, is it? Oh, no, it wasn't months. No, it was years. Yes, that's how long it takes. So imagine if you lived on Uranus, um, Tallulah, you know, you, you, you'd probably um, end up only having one birthday your whole lifetime, which would be terrible because you love birthdays, don't you? Now, which planet is named after the Roman god of the sea? Think about SpongeBob SquarePants. Is it Uranus, Neptune, or Mercury? No, no. it's Neptune. Right. Don't hit the answer just yet. Yeah. Now, can you remember any of the dwarf planets besides Pluto? Oh, is it wrong? Yeah, Ceres and Planet X, Krypton and Vulcan, or Ceres and Make Make. You remember me saying? Do you remember at home? Have a guess to do that. Doesn't matter if you get it wrong. No, it is Ceres and Make Make. Okay. Got now, we have other questions as well that you can have a go at in our quiz and you can research the answers for yourself. Name three of Jupiter's moons. Oh, you're just guessing wildly. Yes. Oh. All right. Now, this one you might be able to remember if you think carefully. How much longer is a day on Mars than on Earth? Seven hours, 37 hours, or 37 minutes? Can you remember at home? So, was it seven hours, 37 hours, or just 37 minutes longer? Think. Do you remember what I said? I said that they're almost the same. Seven hours, 37 hours, or 37 minutes? The answer is... 37 I minutes. I got it! <laughs> You're very good. You didn't press it! And also, can you remember at the beginning, how many moons does Venus have close to the sun? Is it oh. none, two, or seven? Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's it's zero. It's a trick question to do the sorry. And there's another question about how hot it is on the daylight side of Mercury. Um, and the answer to that one is 450 degrees Celsius. Can't, can't be a minus one because, of course, Mercury is the planet that faces the sun all the time on one half of the planet and is permanently cold on the other side. Yes, I did it! Oh, you got one right there. I don't guess. So, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the solar system. And if you want to try those activities, Sign up for the classroom or watch the video and hopefully make some notes um, or do your own research online and see what you can come up with. Well, I hope you've enjoyed going through our solar system um, because we believe, don't we, to do that learning is always better with G and T. Right, bye everybody. Say bye to Luna. <laughs>